Good morning and welcome to worship. Our opening hymn this morning is number 62, Once in Royal David City. Please be seated. Well, good morning on this fourth Sunday of Advent. It's a time of preparation and waiting for the birth of Christ. Christmas is nearly here. Today, we are the re lucky recipients of the gifts of word and song as prepared by our wonderful musician, Jean Thompson, and her dedicated small but mighty choir and we are in for a treat. Most of the, much of the service itself, the order of service and so on, was written by our own Dennis Posno as well, so we appreciate his gift also. Please join us on Christmas Eve when we will meet once again here for our candlelight service at 7 p.m. and we will celebrate the birth of Christ. Our Christmas Day and our New Year's Day services have been pre-recorded and they will be emailed to you and will also be available on our YouTube channel and on our website. And so you don't have to get up early to come here on Christmas Day or New Year's Day, but you can still worship with us. So please do join us then. And now I invite you to take a deep breath, clear our hearts and our minds as we prepare for worship by lighting our Advent candle. Today is the advent of love. As we light this candle, we remember all who are feeling lonely and distressed at this time of year. We live in a world that fears the stranger and the strange. We light this candle as our commitment to love that is expressed in inclusivity. We are the generously. We light this candle for Jesus, the lover of all.
I was thinking about Christmas traditions, and of course, Christmas is a time of gift giving. And I always remember that uh, the best Christmas gift that I ever got was the year I asked for a goalie stick. And I got up in the morning and ran out to the tree and couldn't see a goalie stick anywhere. And then while we were opening gifts, my mother said, uh, did you look behind the curtain to see what was there? And there it was. I had trouble deciding on a tradition since I am a person of tradition. However, participating in this candle lighting this morning triggered a memory of long ago that I had actually forgotten about. And our children, I think, were maybe 14, 10, and 6 in that age range when they still came to church with us. And so we always had the Advent wreath and the candle lighting at the church. But at home, I made sure that we had our own Advent wreath with the candles, and we always had a service at home in the afternoon with the children reading from the Bible and choosing what to read and to sing. And it's a memory that I treasure now, and it was triggered by this participation today. So I'm grateful for that. Let us sing the fourth verse of Hope is a Star. may be seated. Each week we acknowledge the land upon we work and worship and play and this over Advent we have been using a land acknowledgement written by a United Church minister, Mitchell Anderson, who is an Indigenous person. So you can follow along on the screen. Long ago all this land was covered by ice. But God, our creator, brought back the warmth. Plants and animals returned to the land. And then God gave to the land a people, and a people to, the land. to care for one another. To live and in this time, we celebrate the gifts of the Anishinaabeg, the Ojibwa, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi nations known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We celebrate celebrate together with love. And the people called to love and serve others. We eagerly await the day when the law of the land is love. We We work and wait for that day. Would you join with me in our responsive call to worship? God is in our midst today. God is with us in song to fill our hearts. God is with us in scripture to fill our minds. God is with us in mystery to fill us with wonder. God is with us in miracle to fill us with hope. As in days of long ago, When star and angel were the sign, God comes to us in a child to be our savior. God is in our midst today. Let us make room in our hearts for God. Come, let us worship. And now would you join with me in our affirmation of faith? And I would ask you to stand.
candlelight, starlight, and heavenly light draw us to this place today, hope that stirs us, peace that quiets us, joy that fills us, and love that includes us, draw us to God's heart today. In this sacred place, on this Advent Sunday, we proclaim God's joy to the world news, God's to all people good news. In Jesus, God is with us. In wonder, love, and praise, in the miracle and mystery of this day, we proclaim Jesus as Savior, brother, and friend, and proclaim God's grace to all. Amen. It is the season of gift buying, gift wrapping, and gift giving. The church appreciates your gifts of time, talent, and treasure offered for the good of all and for the advancement of God's kingdom. Our offering will be received. We give these gifts, generous God, knowing that all we have is a gift from you. Your creative wonder surrounds us every day, and the bounties of your world enable us to share what we have received. As we give thanks for what we have, encourage us to share these gifts for the care and service of others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. There's nothing better during the Christmas Advent season than the music of the season. Uh, although we do get a little tired of some of it as we go into the stores each time and we hear some of that music, what you're going to hear today is nothing like that. What you're going to hear is wonderful music prepared by our choir and by Jean, and they have worked very hard over the last few weeks. And so now I invite you to sit back and enjoy the music, listen to the story, and allow the spirit of Christmas to fill you.
Our first lesson this morning comes from, first, from Isaiah 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join us as we sing together, number 81, As With Gladness, Men of Old. The second lesson is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, and verses 6 through 10. The peace of Christ is foretold. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. 
The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra. And the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his place of rest will be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The third lesson is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61 and verses 1 and 2, a message of good news to the afflicted. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now you may remain seated as we sing our next carol, number 36, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Our fourth lesson today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 35 and verse 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a young woman pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The woman's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God. The fifth lesson is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 2 and verses 1 to 7. St. Luke tells of Jesus' birth. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place when Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths, and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can remain seated for this hymn as well. It's number 71, The Huron Carol.
The sixth lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. The shepherds go to the manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seventh lesson comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The Magi are led by a star to Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, 
Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star at its, when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The eighth lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, and verses 22 and 23, the presentation of Christ in the temple. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord, Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. 
when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what he said about them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our next hymn is number 38, Angels We Have Heard on High. The ninth lesson is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. The great mystery of the Incarnation is told. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him 
was life. And that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Prayer is a song we all can sing. It's a light that the blind can see. Prayer is a gift that the poor may bring, however poor they be. Prayer is a star that lights the way for those who are in despair. And when your heart kneels down to pray, God will hear your prayer. In the confidence of our faith, 
Let us pray. Holy One, as we have once again pondered the story of your birth, we see your divine love moving through the lives of all the characters in this amazing narrative. Your voice is heard in the angels, sent to deliver your instructions and to allay human fears. We see you in the faithful, courageous hearts of Mary and Joseph as they face many challenges and in the tenderness of your provision for them. Your love is in the heart of the innkeeper. We see you in the vulnerability of a newborn baby. We hear you in the sweet voices of the angel chorus and in the surprised voices of the incredulous shepherds. Later, we will see your wisdom shining through the visiting magi. All who saw you on that night held you in the center of their hearts. We too worship you, hold you, and feel your love direct all our paths. It is for that reason that we gathered here this day to listen and sing and to hear again the old story shared anew. We ask that you bless us and this story to our hearts, blessed one. Amen. We do have coffee and tea downstairs after worship, so please join us. And now receive the benediction. We've heard the Christmas story read and sung once again. Go from this church with enthusiasm, proclaiming the good news. Far from home and vulnerable, Mary and Joseph journeying, awaiting Jesus' birth. Good news. The praising angels tell us, celebrate with joy. Good news. Questing shepherds remind us, search for the highest good. Good news. In the depths of dark December nights, the light of God's love shines out brightly. Good news. There is nothing to fear. Christ is coming. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>